All right, so there's two scenarios in which you would want to get a certain glyph set into RoboFont. Of course, the first one is maybe you're opening RoboFont for the first time or just starting a new project and you want to have a good understanding of like what the total character set is that you're going for and how many glyphs you've done so far or you know just what the project scope will be. Uh, the second scenario is maybe you've started a font and you've got a good solid base for it, but you want to know for sure like how many extra glyphs you're going to need in that to have coverage of a certain character set. So say people in a certain language uh, would have a good expectation of being able to use the font. So uh, basically this is a quick tip on the easiest way, I think, to do this in RoboFont. And I will actually be using the Google Fonts glyph sets as a primary example because, you know, it's probably a pretty common glyph set or standard that people would um, either expect in a project, like a client might expect it, or something you can point to to say, this is a standard, so I'll work with this one. Of course, you can design your own character sets and kind of debate the pros and cons of particular glyphs, but this is a good starting point. So here's RoboFont, just a new document. And here on GitHub is the Google Fonts glyph sets. And you can just Google for this if you want to. Um, I'll include a link in the description. But this is kind of their guide. They've had people look at what might be needed or what might be sensible for various tiers of Latin script, Cyrillic script, and a bunch of other scripts. So we'll run with Latin because uh, if you're watching this video, you probably use Latin a lot. Um, and I'll just click on the Latin core unique glyph names and I'll just go to the raw version and hit command A to copy it all, command C, um, or command A to select it all, command C to copy it. And then I'm going to use VS Code here, which is my favorite code editor. And I'll just paste these right in. You could also, of course, like download this, the file. You can get at this in different ways. I'll also do that for the, say we're like, let's say we want Latin plus. There's a bunch of useful things in here, like Vietnamese and extra currencies. So we'll do both of these. And uh, there's a few things in here. Basically what I'm gonna do is copy all of the actual characters here let me boost this up a little bit. Copy the actual characters here and then get rid of the other text uh, so that I can get these things into RoboFont. There are a few little complexities, like here are extra glyphs that um, these glyph sets expect you to make, like, uh, you know, um, ligatures for F, F, I, et cetera, um, various combinations of accents for Vietnamese. These are, you know, looked at as a best practice, I think, in these particular glyph sets. We'll kind of ignore that for now because you could just add these later. Um, and let's look at the character set itself, not the full glyph set. Um, basically, a really easy way to do this is to use multi-selection um, commands in VS Code. So what I mean by that is a code editor like VS Code, others do this as well, give you certain ways to edit multiple lines of text at once. So a basic thing you can do is like, if you hold Option Command and then press Down, you can manipulate multiple strings of text, uh, multiple lines of text at once. And like, um, you know, you can type in multiple strings at once. So actually we're gonna go one step beyond that. I'm going to shift arrow to select this OX because I know this is in every one of these lines that has an actual character in it. And then I am going to, I think it's up in selection, select all occurrences or shift command L. So that selects all of these zero X. And then I'm going to use option and hit the right arrow to go to the end of this word and command shift left arrow to select the whole word. I'm just gonna delete that whole word. 
uh, like backspace the whole word. And then I'm going to forward delete the next thing and go one to the right. And then I'm going to use command shift right to select the end of the line and I'll backspace that. And so now we've got, and I'm also going to ignore these uh, glyphs where you can't actually just like copy something in and I'll press delete there. All right, so now we've got a bunch of lines. Almost all of them are exactly what we want. This one is actually an exception. So let's delete that little commented line. We could have started by selecting like the beginning of a line. These are interesting. Um, let me quickly check what these might have been. So, um, I see there are a bunch of combining accents. Those are obviously quite important. I think that perhaps they didn't follow the uh, standard way of formatting. Um, so I'm going to try this once more, actually. I'm going to select all of this and then open a new document and just paste it. And I'm going to look at these. Um, I see. So interestingly, I don't think these had a space in front of them, which is a bit of a formatting oddity, to be honest, uh, in the Google Fonts glyph set. So I'll combine or I'll, I'll get these ones explicitly. I'll use this option command down and grab all of these. Uh, oh, I actually have a couple more to grab. Basically, all of these combining things, I think I need to be sure I have. OK. So I will copy those. And then I will, and by the way, I'm just going to check this uh, wgrov that follows. And then what preceded it was the kind of Hungarian double acute, maybe? Double acute accent. OK, cool. So I'm going to copy these now that they're all selected. And I'm going to use Shift to select all of these lines. And I'll paste them in. Perfect. And is this a space after all? Oh, interesting. Well, a couple of extra spaces actually don't matter. Um, because the tools we're using uh, should deal with that. So the next step here is that I'm going to select any line, and I just want to get rid of these new lines that are in here. So there's like an invisible character that determines a new line in a file. So I'm going to click to the end of a line, shift right to select the new line character, and then I'll do this command shift L, select all occurrences. And then instead of just deleting them, I'm going to hit the space bar to replace them with a space. So now I've got a long space separated list of all these characters that I need in this glyph set. And now I'll hit Command A to select them all. And then I'm going to hop over to RoboFont here. And I'm going to be using the Glyph Browser extension, which is a really great extension that allows you to easily find like the exact Adobe compatible name for glyphs and uh, like the proper Unicode. And this is like the best way to add glyphs in uh, to a font. Like this is excellent. There's even some pre-sorted categories here. I think these are based on like Unicode categories. So you actually should take them with a grain of salt perhaps. Um, but the way that we'll do it is by just pasting all of these copied characters all at once into this top part. You can also search for a glyph name, by the way. So like if I wanted to search for dagger, well, I didn't get the name right, so I guess not. If I wanted to search for asterisk, okay, so I see everything that looks like an asterisk. But yeah, it's uh, cool. That's the name search, but this paste these characters in, and here we've got a bunch of pasted characters. And now this instantly shows us the full set of information for all of these characters that we've pasted in. And a note here, the, the characters that it shows, you can 
uh, oops, let's do this again. Uh, all right, we want to see all of those and then, okay. Cool, I think that's all of them. Um, yeah, just without the spaces in there. So basically I clicked on one, I hit Command A to select them all. And then I can copy names, copy as space separated names. Um, and by the way, like the names that it copies, well, we could add these directly to the font for one, um, but it's pretty handy to copy them as space separated names, as you'll see in a moment. Um, if you were doing this with a partially created, like completed font in the background that was open here, uh, like something, say you already drew the uppercase Latin alphabet, uh, this would be a little lower and it wouldn't copy all of the names of the glyph set. So I actually really like doing this process with a brand new file open right behind this, even if I'm doing it for an existing partially completed font. So I'm gonna copy a space separated names and then I'm gonna open my RoboFont sidebar here and you can see that I've done some default sets already, but I'm gonna add a new one. Uh, create new set from glyph names and I'm going to title it like GF uh, Latin uh, core plus so um, you could you know you can have spaces in uppercase I think in this set name but I prefer not to uh, and then go into this box and hit paste and this will paste all of those Adobe compatible names that you just copied out of glyph browser and you could either do it as a font set, which I think is limited to the specific UFO you've got open. Um, so I usually do default set where you'll have this item in your sidebar for any font that's open. I'm gonna hit okay. And here it is. And you'll see that there's zero out of 464 glyphs in this font so far. But what you can do is double click on this little pill shape here and it gives you all of these names and you can create like one missing glyph or you can do command A to select all of these and then create 464 missing glyphs, add them as template glyphs. Um, yeah, there's some helpful options here basically. But it'll add these glyphs and now we've got our full glyph set. And so, you know, you might not want all of this right now or you might delete some of these placeholders or something, but you can always click on this pill shape to like add anything that's missing that you don't yet have. So, you know, you might also do this if you want to add the Google Cyrillic glyph set to an existing Latin font or other such things. So the final uh, thing I should mention just kind of like as a way I've also determined a lot of glyph sets is that um, alphabet type not affiliated with Google Alphabet, um, in Berlin has a Careset Builder. Um, and this is a super awesome tool. And basically it's kind of another way of getting at the problem of like what glyphs do I need for particular languages I would like to support. So, and they have also got a really nice character set checker which checks for support. Um, and so say you wanted to support, you know, English, like as a starter point, you can search for it. Oh, I, oh, sorry. So this has language systems. Um, I probably am searching for, maybe I'll do command F. Okay, here we go. Command F was the ticket. Um, this is pretty cool. I think it also relies on some Unicode data, but I like how they've uh, broken it up here. Um, you can see that like, here's the like basic requirements for the language. Here are auxiliary characters. So characters used in other words, maybe that are borrowed from other languages um, or maybe common in names uh, of people and then some basic punctuation. So basically like if we wanted to add like decent English support to a font and that's it, um, you know what, let's, let's obviously like, we'll do one better and also add Spanish support. So you, it actually highlights the few glyphs in gray that we're missing 
that would be required for Spanish languages. So, all right, this is still a very limited character set for a font. We'd probably go through and add a lot of other, you know, Latin based languages, but uh, this is a pretty quick way to do it. So here we can copy these names directly to the clipboard. And then we could once again, add a set that was like, um, we'll just do it as an example here. Uh, Unicode, English, Spanish. And then we can paste these glyphs. And now we've got this. And if you click on this, it shows all of the glyphs in the, perm uh, the current font that like are included in the set. And actually, interestingly, it seems like these few glyphs are suggested by Unicode for Spanish, whereas they're not suggested by the Google uh, Latin Plus. And I bet it has like single guillemets in there. So I'm actually sort of curious if there's, okay, there's just a naming conflict here actually, I believe. Um, yeah, there's just two different ways to name these things. So they are actually all in the font. And then this, to 2010 Unicode thing is just a hyphen. So, um, yeah, uh, it turns out that you know this isn't a 100% foolproof thing. You'd notice that, like, say the Unicodes kind of overlapped. Um, so, for instance, I guess you know, like, let's create all these missing glyphs, and we'll essentially just uh, change a few names. I think. Um, yeah, so it seems like maybe these aren't the best names because, or maybe, let's see if they have, they don't have Unicodes. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt if you come over from the Unicode data or this character set builder. Um, it's still a very useful tool, uh, but, you know, a common use case probably is just wanting to go from the glyph sets from Google Fonts into RoboFont. And I know that in the past that was a little bit confusing for me and it took me way longer to like be confident that I was doing it right um, than I should have. So yeah, this is the basic approach in RoboFont. And, you know, by the way, we did end up with all of these extra glyphs. So you could also just add these lines to um, either another glyph set or like to this same one. So you can double click and add. And by the way, let's just like make sure we convert these new lines into spaces. And maybe let's try to delete some of these extra spaces. Yeah. Um, so then if we add all of these names here, Uh, and we double click. Let's create all these missing glyphs. Uh huh. These will probably just show up as like, yeah, just like not the actual, because there's not a, a Unicode value for all of these. But some of these there are actually, which is cool. Uh, or is it a Unicode or just Robofont is, okay, it is actually a Unicode. Nice. Um, but yeah, like seven lining figure. Uh, you know, that's just kind of a stylistic set ter or open type feature territory rather. So yeah, hopefully this is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll try to answer them. Thanks a lot.